Hi everybody, my name is Bailey and I am here with the Million Dollar Etsy shop. Today I am going to be showing you how I edit my photos. Um, as you can see here, I am editing in real time and I'm going to try to explain everything I do in Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, one of the first things that I am doing is editing my tone curve. Um, as you can see, my inspiration for this photo is the February um, uh, issue of Vogue, um, Vogue UK. My model has very similar complexion and features to Emma Stone. And I wanted to, I was very inspired by the lighting in um, that the, this photographer chose. Um, and there's a lot of post-processing that was done. And I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, airbrushing and other type of effects that was done as well. But I'm going to try to do a lot of similar things here. So the, one of the first things I'm doing is, as you can see, I dropped the luminance of the background. I'm trying to roughly match the background. Later on, in the end of the video, I'm going to rematch all of that data or all of that information. But So first I edited my tone curve to a gentle S curve um, to try to deepen my shadows and brighten my highlights a little bit to create a little bit more of a dramatic effect, which is further dramatized by a plus 10 contrast. Um, an S curve and contrast don't do the same thing, but, um, they're a little different. Um, and I can't explain the difference. I'm sure a better photographer than myself could show, could, could explain that a little bit better. Um, so one of the things that I love doing is adjustment brushes. So here I am using an adjustment brush to brighten her eyes. Emma Stone has something similar going on with her eyes. Um, the, I'm sure the artist has gone in and brightened her green eyes a little bit and probably a similar manner. I'm not sure. I did not look over the post-processing, um, myself, um, obviously. Um, but as, as you can see, my, my model has brown or hazel eyes. Um, so I'm uh, upping the exposure by quite a lot, almost a full F stop. Um, and I'm dropping the blacks. Um, a little bit to create a little bit more of a dramatic contrast and also having a saturation just a hair and the sharpness just a hair um, the sharpness is kind of just more for the pupil and the, and the eyelashes um, one of the things I do like to do is up the blacks on eyelashes just to create sort of a, it's something similar that I do to the gemstones I usually treat the eyelashes similar or the eyeballs similar to my gemstones because they are kind of similar in a way. Um, they have a similar draw to the, the viewer's eye um, and, you know, similar beauty in, in the composition. So as you can see, I'm going to be doing something very similar to my gemstones. I'm going to be upping the exposure just a little bit just to bring a little bit more light in. Um, What's cool about shooting in RAW is that data is still there. Um, so when they are a little underexposed and a little dark, you can bring a little bit of light in and brighten that up to draw the eye to that space. So even though it's in a shadow behind her hair, I can bring a little light in there to make it not so lost in the composition. So I'm scrolling around and I'm not sure what I'm trying to find, but... I think I was a little frustrated with this. I think even though I'm bringing up the exposure, it looks a little hazy. And I'm not sure what I was trying to find. So I upped the luminance. I'm, I, 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 one of the things I do when something doesn't quite look right, sometimes it's good just to experiment with the settings. Sometimes even with experience, you're not really sure what to do. Oh, one of the things, I noticed that the color, when I brought up the light, it looked different than the other amethyst. It looked a little bit more pink, so I dropped the color. I changed the color a little bit in the tent to make it a little bit more blue like the other amethyst, because you don't want it, because I wanted it to look like an amethyst, not like something else, so I was just trying to ma color match. Um, the other gemstones in the picture and it looks pretty good to me so so these are my rough edits are are pretty much done from what it looks like from an overall glance um, 
I think I'm using my mouse is hidden for some reason when I'm recording. What, right now what I'm doing is I'm pulling my eyedropper across my composition and making sure everything is balanced. As you can see, my seamless is a little bit more lit on the left side than the right side, but I think I'm okay with it with the composition um, in this instance. So here I'm doing another adjustment brush and doing a little bit of fine detailing. Um, one of, another thing that I like to do is go in to, to uh, one of the things that I like to do with jewelry is to make it pop just a little bit off the model. Um, and I think I overdid it in some of my images and this one, I think it turned out okay. In some of my other ones, I end up going back which I don't think I'm going to go over in this video, but in some of my images, I, I, I th used to overdo this. I think I'm going to try to get a little bit better about this, but um, is making this, this effect I kind of have overdone in the past, but with a subtle effect, I think this works, but I, you know, lower my blacks a little bit, up my sharpness, up my highlights, and I'm just trying to make it a little bit more contrasted against the skin. Um, and the, the, the goal is to make this pop against the body and I'm always in this struggle between not doing enough edits and overdoing it and I think in this because I am doing a lot more of a contrasty effect on the overall image than I'm used to because I'm sort of mimicking this Vogue image on the right this is a lot more of a heavy shadow than I'm used to um, I think it works, but if I was doing a more of a softer edit, softer of an S curve on the model, this would be way too much of a pop effect that I'm doing on the, on the ring. So you kind of have to know, you kind of have to work with your overall edits with what you're doing and your overall style of the image. Like you guys can't prop, you, you definitely can't pause this image and copy my edits into your image. It's probably not going to work. So now what I'm doing is I'm doing the edit in Adobe Photoshop option. So this is something that I just started doing was is using the, um, you can flip flop in between Lightroom and Photoshop because they are not the same software. They do have a lot of the same features and the same abilities. And you definitely can pick one or the other and pretty much never have to use the other software. But what I found is you can use them together to do a lot more, if that makes sense. So, um, I, and, and they have this really cool ability, this cool file format called a .tiff file where you can, oh, there's this, this is cool. This is called image nomic. This is a new not new, this is actually a really old um, plugin that I found. And y'all, this uh, this is the first time, that I'm, this is live, live recorded. This is the first time, not live recorded, but this is me working in it live, the first time I've used a software um, to edit skin and it way overdoes it. And I, I am not sure yet how to not do such a dramatic effect, but this basically can edit your model skin and it ends up being a little bit too dramatic, but you, you guys can see this. It used to take me an hour and a half to manually edit model skin, but this software does it for you. It's a little too intense, but it, 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 it'll edit the skin without blurring the eyes and the lips and all of those sharp details that you want to retain. But it kind of, I, I think I figured it out, like just now looking at it, I think I can lower the threshold maybe, or I can... I haven't figured out the other settings, but, and as you can see, I'm, I'm fiddling around with it now and I'm not really sure what I'm doing because this is the first time I've opened this, this plugin, but um, the goal is to not have to manually go in and like smooth the pores and smooth any rosacea or anything like that on the model. This model actually had beautiful skin. You probably don't need to edit anything. Um, you could go straight to print, but you know, I was of course, me being a tech nerd, I wanted to try out, a, you know, try out a new, t a new tool. But anyways, so I think the fine, medium, and large smoothing here, you can go in and fiddle with all this stuff. And I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of sliding bars around and playing with it. But um, 
But anyway, so I don't know if this can work miracles if you're, you know, 90 years old and you're trying to look like you're, you know, 22 like this model is, but... <laughs> but I was I was pretty mesmerized because, you know, when you previously were using, you know, spending two hours to do an edit and you find a software that does it for you automatically, you're kind of like, whoa, even if it is a little over airbrushed for you and it looks a little... I think one of my assistants was like, it looks like those Vaseline glamour shots from the 80s, you know, like a little too, you know, like those glamour shots from like, you know, the, this is like, I don't know. It's kind of like, maybe it's coming back in style, but it's pretty amazing because, you know, the eyelashes and the makeup are completely retained, but the cheeks are flawlessly smoothed over and I just clicked a couple buttons but but anyways yeah I think from from all of the uh gauges and bars and I could create another layer in Photoshop and adjust the opacity and stuff but I mean I think it looks pretty good so anyways um I'm kind of in awe with that but anyways so that's the that's the before Looks like I'd, I'd do it again. Duplicate layer. That's before and then the after. I think I... Oh, yeah. So I do play with the opacity. I'm trying to figure out how to make it not so intense. Because um, I, I kind of don't want my... I don't want that to be the image of my brand. Is I, I do want my brand to be sort of natural, but I don't want a, a face to be distracting in any way. I don't want my customer to be distracted by too much skin if that makes sense like you do want it to look professional um but like i said I, i'm playing with a new tool here so anyways i, I did want to try doing a live edit for you guys because everything every time i've done it in the past i've done two and three x and even four x speeds and sometimes it it goes so fast that you can't really see what i'm doing so i, pro I apologize if this is droning on a little bit but um i wanted to kind of show you everything. So anyways, I'll talk about the lighting and stuff in here while I'm, 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 I'm rambling on a little bit, but the lighting. So as you can see the light through her hair, we ended up putting the light behind her hair. Um, so that's why you can see this post kind of coming out in the right. And I'll, I'm going to Photoshop that out in a minute. But anyways, um, by putting the light directly behind her hair, that's how you can get that halo effect. Um, and it was a really bright light. So it's, this is a typical clamshell lighting. Um, where you have two lights um, that are in a V-shape in front of her with the larger light facing her face and a smaller light highlighting the, the left side of the earring and the, and the rings on her hand. And then the brightest light source is actually behind her, illuminating the hair. Um, but yeah, so we were pretty happy with that the way that this turned out, and we ended up doing a whole series of images with the same sort of lighting, um, some with a black seamless, and most of them with this blue seamless inspired by that Vogue cover. Um, you know, we're not, we're not completely copying. I don't like copying, but I do think that there is validity in being inspired by color combinations. I don't think there's anything plagiaristic about that, but... Um, but anyways, so, yeah, I think I'm still pretty, pretty much confused and befuddled by how that software worked. <laughs> but anyways, um, I'll, uh, if, if anyone has any questions about that software in particular, just comment below and I can drop a link. I think it was, I think I'm using a, a trial right now. I think they have a pretty generous free trial. You can play around with that. Um, and let me know if you have any clever ways to make it not so intense. Um, I think, let me know if you can figure out how to make it not so glamour shoddy. <laughs> um, and if, uh, I think the cost of that software, if you end up needing to buy it because you're so obsessed with, with it like I am, I think it's $200, which isn't too bad, um, especially if this becomes part of your daily workflow. Um, okay, so now I'm going to be photoshopping out the bar, and I don't know why I didn't... So the, the easiest way is to, you know, select it all and do a fill, and I don't know why... I think I'm, my brain just turned to mush 
during um, during this edit. So what you might be thinking like me, well, I'm going to use the clone stamp tool and try to just kind of stamp this out. Um, but as you can see, there's some obvious problems with that. Um, the clone stamp tool is going to be a little muddy around the edges. As in, and I'm going to show you the problems with that, the problems that I ran into. Um, and the fill tool is sometimes has problems of its own. So in the end, I'm going to end up using a combination of the two. Um, but anyway, so when you have the hair like this, you don't want to just, you know, use the paint tool or anything like that because the hair isn't a smooth line. Um, and you don't want there to be this obvious line here. And even the clone stamp tool, as you can see, like there is kind of like, you can tell that I'm using the clone stamp tool. I mean, maybe the untrained eye wouldn't be able to see, but anyways, so I'm using this and trying to like kind of paint this over, but there's not really a smooth seamless anymore it's I mean maybe if you're not watching this on 1080p you can't tell but if you are watching this on HD you're, you're gonna be able to see that it looks muddy and dirty and my background looks pretty bad so that's a huge problem for me and I don't know why I even spent this much time doing this I should have thought about this immediately but the best way to edit this. See, I'm, I'm already undoing it. I know this is wrong. The best way to do this is to select this bar. Also, another side tip, you never want to be like, you know what? The worst thing you can say during your photo shoot is I'm just going to edit this in post-processing. The best thing to say is I am going to fix this before I even shoot the picture. I should have put this on a different tripod. I should have put the lamp completely hide it hidden behind her instead of on this arm like this. So as you can see, I select it, back click, right click, fill, content aware, boom, done. Easy as pie. There's a little bit of the content aware kind of picked up her hair a little bit. So I can use the clone stamp, just boop, one little boop, done. But you see there's no muddiness at all because the content aware tool pretty much got it pretty clean there's a little bit of muddiness near the hair but i mean i can i can use the clone stamp tool i think i end up let me see how did how did i fix this i think i created a new layer No, I think I was happy with it. No, I'm not sure. Let me see what I do. Maybe I was frustrated and I left it, but you could. No, I fix it. I think I do a new layer and I paint. Maybe I'll come back to it later. I remember fixing this. Maybe I'll fix it in the next video for you guys. But anyways, there is a fix for this. Oh, here we go. I think I'm editing out a little bit of the baby hairs. I actually, in some cases, I obsessively edit out baby hairs especially when it's on my head. But in, in her case, I hired this girl because I love her hair so much. Um, it's kind of a feature for her, so I'm not going to go out and obsessively edit all her hairs out. That's kind of why I hired her, so. Anyways, this video is done. I'm going to do a part two, so we're not doing too many movies. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for part two.